And welcome back to Morning Shot. For those of you who saw it, last week we did a video around Julius Malema calling for potential bloodshed in South Africa. Uh, to date, the mainstream media has still not picked up on the news. Unsurprising. And with us today is uh, an MP from Freedom Front Plus who picked up on the news and are pursuing their own core action against the EFF for their utterances. Hello, Manir. How are you? Good in yourself. Not too bad. So before we start, just for our viewers, can you explain who you are, wh what you do with Freedom Front Plus? I'm Voter Vessels. I'm a member of Parliament, as you said, and I'm also uh, the uh, national spokesperson of the Freedom Front Plus. Fantastic. Okay, and so obviously you you saw the the um, EFF's tantrum in the Western Cape. Do you want to describe to to the viewers what he said that you've uh, that you've picked up on? Well, he incited violence um, against a person, saying that uh, allegedly uh, that person assaulted a member or members of the EFF um, earlier this year during the. Uh, the um, protest at uh, at a school in the Western Cape, Welcome and uh, he then said that uh, uh, he is disappointed that members of the EFF did not follow up on this and allowed a white person to do this, and that revolutionaries should not be afraid to kill, and uh, basically incited violence not only against this individual but also incited violence against all white people. And uh, that is, in our view, uh, a contravention of the Riotous Assemblies Act, so it's a statutory offence, but it's also a common law offence of incitement to violence. And uh, then a lot of what he also said um, with regards to the revolution and inciting people to stand up and inciting members of the EFF to, to do that, uh, in our view, uh, also is an act of high treason. So we laid uh, criminal charges uh, yesterday against uh, Judas Malema for uh, the uh, incitement to violence, also the contravention of the Riotous Assemblies Act, and then also high treason. But we also laid a, a complaint with the Human Rights Commission for hate speech because we do believe that uh, what he said, and especially with regards to the racial factor is a, a is hate speech, and uh, the Human Rights Commission also uh, acknowledged receipt of our complaint and said that they are busy investigating um, what he said. Hmm. Ramon, so Mr. Vessels, uh, the the main case this year about hate speech was the Kiel de Boer case that Efron brought against EFF and James Malema in particular. The decision was that singing Kill the Boer is not hate speech. Uh, there is an appeal ongoing because of that case. But what do you feel are your chances based on the, that jurisprudence that has happened before, where something that seems fairly obviously hate speech is deemed not to be found hate speech? Does that concern you in any way in your action? Well, if we talk about that court case, it is quite astounding. Remember, um, Quite a number of years ago, we succeeded as the Freedom Front Plus to have uh, Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer regarded as, as hate speech. Um, and uh, that ruling stood up until this court case. And, and we can talk about was it actually a wise decision to go to court um, on this issue because there was a standing ruling um, by the uh, Human Rights uh, Commission uh, Tribunal on, on appeal. They initially ruled in our, in our uh, complaint that it's not hate speech. Then we took it on appeal and it was ruled in the appeal that it is hate speech. So that was a standing um, uh, precedent, but uh, now the ruling uh, supersedes that. And uh, that's, that's quite concerning. We hope that the appeal will succeed now. Um, and, uh, but I don't think the two issues are, are really interlinked. That's freedom of speech. There's, there's a lot of academic views on the singing of struggle songs and that it's not literal. And we heard all of that testimony in that particular court case. By, a British, yet, by a British lady who's never lived in this country. We loved exactly, it. The, the testimony exactly, was fantastic. Exactly. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is that words do have consequences. 
you can't view something academically as something historic that had a certain context in that time. You must also place it in the context of South Africa at this point in time and with farm murders taking place, with um, a lot of polarization taking place between races, which is unfortunate, and then this type of, of song, obviously. Um, Kill the Boer and Boer, uh, in the testimony and on, in a lot of the evidence um, before the court, did not literally or should not literally mean a farmer, although the word farmer is used, but should uh, was used to, to, to talk about the government, but also talk about white people, the white government. And uh, the, 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 the question is, does someone who's singing it now, that um, a new generation that uh, did not grow up in apartheid, that's growing up in South Africa now with inequality, with racial polarization taking place, does that person really view it in this historical context that it's just a historical song um, celebrating the struggle? Or does a person really view it in, in context of what is happening currently and does it then incite violence? But in this particular case, uh, we view it as a criminal offence. Incitement to violence is a criminal offence. Incited violence, uh, incited violence against an, an individual, as I, as I said. So I don't think there's, there's really the context of that court case and freedom of speech view of and that that can be used as a, as a defense at all because this is uh, about inciting and saying that revolutionaries should not be afraid to kill and that cannot be viewed mm. uh, but he didn't just say that though did he he actually said at some point in time as a revolutionary party revolutions have to kill have to kill exactly he didn't so, say uh, we calling for he said at some point in time they must kill and he said, when right. you kill, don't be afraid to kill. To kill. Those were his yes. words. Yes. Now, and in a constitutional democracy, that can't be viewed as, as freedom of speech. That must be viewed um, as incitement. And, uh, and it, it can't be right. Uh, we can't allow that. And that's why we are proceeding with, with, with these charges. And uh, if, if the police are and the prosecuting authority, <coughs> sorry, are unwilling to, to prosecute and to take this further, we will most certainly um, uh, consider uh, private prosecution because this case must be took, took, uh, t taken to court. So I'm going to speak on behalf of all of our viewers because I know what they're all going to think, <laughs> and I, I think Ramon probably agrees with me. The EFF does what they do because they have been emboldened. They've been emboldened because once before, you may recall, they went through to the Human Rights Commission over the comments of slitting the throats of whiteness. And as part of that case, obviously, the, the Human Rights Commission said, you have to take into account that words mean different things depending on who or the race of the person that says it. If you're a white person who says it, well, you, you have a less tolerance and a black person can call for, say, the slaughter of white people, cutting the throatness of whiteness. Because of, you know, historical contexts, apartheid and things, you know, like you have to just understand that the blacks were replaced. And so if you say cutting the throat of blackness by Waka, that's not OK. But if a black says it about white person, that's fine. So as a result, that's emboldened Malima. Now Malima's had the case with Kill the Boer. That's emboldened Malima. As we saw, even when they all left the court case, the first thing that went outside is when AfriForum left their building, all the F EFF supporters were, were singing Kur de Boer, and that was on camera in front of the, you know, the SABC. Um, these things emboldened him. But we also have to take into account other things that have happened. He was recently acquitted for assaulting a police officer. That case took nearly five, four or five years to get to trial. He's currently got a pending case open for firing a firearm in a, in a crowded arena, which was also done at an EFF rally. The case has still not been heard, even though he was on camera doing it. So as far as Malima is concerned, he's untouchable, mate. Like, and I suppose the audience, the natural reaction from anybody who's watching will be, okay, it's great that you're pursuing a case, but so what? Like, just join the queue and it's not going to go anywhere. It's, it's been like this for how long? And the institutions are designed to protect him. So what, what outcome can you get from this? You're quite right. And uh, I think the, the if, if um, does... Uh, do view themselves as completely untouchable 
and as you've said, this these these cases and and uh, all of that you've mentioned does um, does instill that that type of uh, confidence that they can do whatever they want, um, and we see that in Parliament as well. We saw this uh, it this week, um, you know, mm. uh, completely uh, complete chaos, which is not to the benefit of their view, uh, very constituents, because. Um, what happened in Parliament this week to to cause that chaos during a medium term budget uh, policy statement, creates investor disconfidence. It uh, it's it's really bad for South Africa's reputation. But the fact of the matter is, it's it's one thing to say that uh, you know you will get away with this once again, most probably. Um, and uh, what does it help to pursue any of this? Some people also say we should not give Malema any airtime. Um, just leave him alone. But the problem is that he, he, he does have supporters, the EFF does have supporters. Um, there's people that are being influenced by, by, by these type of uh, incitement and polarization. And for South Africa to succeed, we cannot allow, and I'm going to put it very bluntly, we can't allow the bad people from different groups to get together. We should have um, a meeting of the mind of good people. And there's good people from all walks of life, from all different communities in South Africa. We are a beautiful country, but when, the, when those on the extremist corners of groups come together and win, then South Africa is going to be a complete failure. We can't allow that. And that is why, even though it might be said, what will this help? We can't stop pursuing and every time, trying our utmost best to keep him accountable for what he's saying. Um, even if we fail, we can't just not do anything. We should continue as people that are fighting for a better future for South Africa, for all communities in South Africa. We can't let a uh, radical like Julius Malema get away with, with this. And uh, we must keep, we, we should keep on pursuing these type of issues. Otherwise, we are actually uh, complicit in in South Africa going down the drain and uh, racial polarization taking over, and that we can't allow. So, uh, Mr. Vessels, assuming this goes well, I mean, it'll be a few years before it gets to court, assuming the MPA refuses to prosecute, you get a private prosecution. If all this goes well, what are the repercussions for Julius Malema based on the charges of uh, hate speech in one one aspect and then treason in the other. It seems like if you are successful, the punishment is rather, rather harsh. Yeah. Well, high treason might be debatable if it is really high treason. And we know that that prosecution is, is extreme. There's, there's not a lot of, uh, of, of legal precedent uh, with regards mm -hmm. to that. So uh, we view it as, as high treason, but the incitement of violence and the contravention of the right is, um, Assemblies Act is a statutory offence, it's a criminal offence, and uh, we believe that uh, if, if he's found guilty, he will obviously have, have to, to face imprisonment, because that is um, the, the uh, statutory sanction for the contravention of the Rightous um, Assemblies Act, and in, in the common law, uh, uh, crime um, offence of, of incitement is also punishable by, by imprisonment, so I think there should be, um, if, if the legal system works in this instance and, uh, it, and, and really does um, operate as it should, then uh, we must face the full consequences of the law if it's if he's found uh, guilty. Yeah, we both know that that's not going to happen though, don't we? I mean, the, M the MPA are probably going to look at it and be like, ah, some whitey's just doing some stuff, you know. Okay, and then... What, what, the, what is the interesting, region. though, is that the Human Rights Commission in this instance, and that's now the, the other charge, and obviously we know that the Human Rights Commission do not have a lot of teeth, but there they are certain sanctions. They can go to the Equality Court and there's, there's certain sanctions there. But what is interesting in this case is that they took it upon themselves to investigate this before we even laid the complaint. Um, so our, our complaint came after they already made a decision as the commission to investigate this, which is interesting and we should take note thereof, that uh, maybe there is something happening um, and maybe the Human Rights Commission is taking this serious. Um, 
Yeah. Maybe, 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 they skeptical. maybe they watched our video, Baron. Come on. Well, there wouldn't have just been ours. I mean, Afri Forum uh, did their own broadcast on this. And obviously, Afri Forum have launched their own website now called Stop Malima, which is a campaign against Malima's continuous hate speech. But, you know, you can color me, color me skeptical on this. You know, we, we've seen so many times now with the MPA being unwilling to prosecute against Julius. They've allowed him to continue doing things. The Human Rights Commission excuses it based on whatever rubbish excuse they come up with. I suppose the relevant question that I would have would be, how is this not a violation of Julius's oath to office? Because obviously he swore in to protect the constitutional democracy. Revolutions don't occur in constitutional democracies, mate. So isn't that a violation of his oath as an MP? It is. And a lot of things he, he said in the past uh, might constitute a, a violation of the oath. Um, and uh, the problem there is the ethics committee in parliament uh, will then have to consider it. It's a substantive motion that's brought and, and those type of... He, of he's on that committee though, isn't he? He's actually he's on that on committee that, now. Oh, convenient. Committee. And, <laughs> and uh, it, it makes it difficult. But it's, it's, it's something to consider, and uh, especially even if the Human Rights Commission do find him, him guilty and uh, issues a fine or whatever sanction they, they would uh, proceed with, that is something substantial to then take to uh, Parliament uh, to, to bring a substantive motion and to refer it to the Ethics Committee, because that will then um, you know, prove that, that he did um, violate his oath. At this stage, it will be, did he, did he not? And we know what's happening, even with the Section 194 committee at the moment. They are debating more the issue of should they proceed or should they not um, than the merits of, of the public uh, protector's um, uh, case and the prima facie yeah, and evidence. The, and, the, and the EFF clown attorney walked out yesterday in a show of argument. Nothing else to add here, so I'm a groom, I suppose. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. But... I, I don't think the viewers should ignore that. Malima is on the ethics committee. So is he mm. going to find himself guilty of breaching the ethics? How is it that an ethic committee is staffed by the very people that they're investigating? That's surely a joke, right? I mean, well, in the case where a substantive motion is referred by the national assembly to the ethics committee, um, the person that, that's uh, implicated uh, or accused would uh, have to recuse themselves of the committee. So he will be replaced by another EFF member, obviously, because the ethics Floyd committee... <laughs> they, they, it is constituted by representatives of the different political parties. So they do have representation there, but it won't be Malema himself. Though, yeah. So I'm excusing myself, but my boyfriend, he's coming over. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to check if I'm guilty. So just a, a final question from me, uh, many of vessels. Manima has been in trouble for utterances in the past. Do you think this is, based on what Byron said earlier, the fact that he's gotten away with it, is this just hubris? Or is there something a lot more cynical and dangerous happening to our politics that we need to be aware of? It is extremely dangerous, because it's, but it's also very easy politics. It's, it's extremely easy to go out and to incite people. Um, it's, it's more difficult to convince South Africans in the dire circumstances that we are in that there's hope and that we should um, you know, work together to build a better future. That's, that's the hard part of politics. The easy part of, of all people, all groups, of uh, all races are to go out and be extreme and to incite a racist against each other. It's very, very easy. Um, but it's very, very dangerous. And that's the politics that the EFF um, are playing. And uh, it's to, to keep their, uh, their populism. We should also take uh, into account that the EFF, um, they are losing support. Um, they are not doing as well as they thought they would. And uh, there's, there's a lot of internal trouble within the EFF that's not always visible to the outside because it's, um, it's 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 literally not a democracy. It's uh, it's uh, so one man's it, uh, personal project. Put it that way. Yes, it is, and uh, people are not allowed. To, you know, he, he runs the EFF. He and Floyd runs the EFF with with iron fists, and uh, 
sits in their camps, their houses, and looks at the, the troops um, making chaos and then disrupting. But the fact is that um, they, they are losing support. Their policies on uh, open borders uh, did lose them support uh, from their voters. And they're trying to make, and that's what the ANC has done for, for, for many years, is play the easy blaming white people, blaming apartheid, um, and not actually offering solutions. And that's what the EFF is now also trying to do. And obviously, it, the platform is created by him never facing consequences and for, for what he's, he's saying. So he just he has this arrogance of just playing that politics, trying to incite and getting populist support. And that's why we can't allow um, him just to get away with it without trying to oppose it um, by any means necessary. I, I know this. I know you're skeptical, but uh, we should keep on fighting this good fight. We can't just give, uh, you know, just give up hope and uh, give South Africa away to uh, extremists like like Malema. Yeah, so I think I'm just relaying the skepticism of the audience. I know exactly what the comments will say, and this will be what the comments will <laughs> I know, say. So I know, I know. I'm, I'm playing I'm playing the comments before they're there. Anyway, I have one final question, uh, and then Ramon, you can ask any final questions you have. Uh, I suppose AfriForum has a solution to all of this, and that is build your own communities, get a firearm, get trained, and become independent of the government. Is that a position Freedom Front Plus echoes? And if it is, here's your platform, mate. Well, we, we need to... Um... We believe that all groups um, should have rights to uh, to protect themselves, to uh, be self-sustainable. But at the end of the day, we are in South Africa and we are in this ship that is sinking. And if this ship sinks, it's that old cliche of um, if you're a tree in the forest and the rest of the forest, forest burns down, you're also going to burn down. Um, we can't just uh, at this stage think that... Uh, we shouldn't be concerned with uh, South African politics and we shouldn't try to, to steer the ship in the right direction. Um, we are part of South Africa. There's, uh, like I said before, um, wonderful people in this country. It's actually a wonderful country. And uh, that's why we should uh, keep the hope and uh, try to do everything in our power on the different levels, our firms, initiatives, um, neighborhood watches, uh, all those initiatives, it's like, like I always say, it's one wheel with different spikes. And, uh, but at the end of the day, we also need to be in uh, parliament, be in those uh, uh, coalition governments that we can form on, on local level to get things going again to the benefit of all South Africans and to create a better future in this country. We can't, uh, we can't give up and we should uh, take all the initiatives that's there and get the wheel going in the right direction. I think that's that's where the solution lies, taking hands um, and, and, and really working towards a better future. Cool. Yeah, cannot disagree with that. Thank you, Mr. Vessels. No further questions from me. Uh, just thank you for your time and uh, for being on Morning Shots. We do appreciate it. Thanks very thank much. Thank you for having me. Okay, we're going to call it there, but hang on with us. We'll speak to you in a sec. Take it easy.